Hello, uh, my name is Ruth Meisner, and this is the second of uh, presentations regarding uh, Omelette, which is the Optimization and Machine Learning Toolkit. Here, I'm going to dive a bit more into formulations. Uh, if you haven't seen the first video yet, uh, you'll find it linked below. Okay, so this is the team. Uh, we'd be delighted to have you join us. And recall from our first video that the type of optimization problem we wish to solve are those that hybridize uh, mechanistic model-based optimization, that is optimization where I can write down uh, the constraints, and surrogate models learned from data. So maybe there's some complicated uh, reaction or something like this, if I have an engineering application uh, that I can model from data, but I don't have equations describing it, I want to hide um, the uh, complexity of going from the neural network to uh, an optimization formulation, this is exactly what Omelette does. We also work with gradient boosted trees, of course, and in the previous video I gave the example of this particular formulation. I said it was pretty complicated and that what we're doing in Omelette is we're hiding that to the best of our ability so that what you have to know is how to hook the inputs into the omelet bo block and the output of the gradient boosted tree uh, from the omelet block, but that you do not have to code yourself uh, the gradient boosted tree formulation itself. Uh, it's a bit of a waste of time if you're not actively doing research in the area. Okay, but remember that neural networks have quite a lot of different activation functions. Uh, this is a really great way of starting to talk about the way Omelette makes switching between optimization formulations really very easy. So um, here are a number of neural network activation functions. These are, of course, functions that would operate at each node uh, in a neural network. I can think of a uh, ReLU function. This would be a rectified linear unit that is either equal to zero or some linear function. I can think of a, a linear activation function, tan h, soft plus, quite a lot of other activation functions. But within an omelet framework, um, there are sort of two types of activation functions. One are the non-smooth activation functions, and the other set are the smooth activation functions. And here, by smooth versus non-smooth, what we mean is that the activation function itself has some place where uh, there is a discontinuity in the derivative of the function. Now, what is really cool about Omelette is that we have a number of different formulations that are available for each of the activation functions that we support. For uh, the rectified linear unit, we have three competing activation functions. Um, so you will find papers in the literature that will compare or contrast sort of the big M formulation versus a complementarity formulation versus a partition formulation. And this is really good research, um, but the challenge for somebody who now wants to use this research is that uh, you don't know which one to implement because it's quite problem specific which of these formulations is going to turn out to be the most useful. Similarly, there are nice research uh, papers that compare a full space formulation versus a reduced space formulation for uh, the smooth activation functions. And again, Omelette is going to let us switch between these different formulations very, very easily. Um, so for uh, ReLU, we have uh, three types of uh, formulations. We have a big M formulation, we have a complementarity formulation, and we have a partition formulation. For the smooth activation functions, we have two formulations. Um, this is the full space smooth and the reduced space smooth. The activation functions that we currently support uh, that are smooth are linear, tan H, sigmoid, soft plus, and then a generic smooth monotonic function. Now, one thing to note here is that we should pay attention to what is Omelette introducing into uh, the optimization formulation when we are using each of these uh, types of formulations. 
So if uh, we are to use either uh, the big M formulation or the ReLU partition formulation, the omelet block that is produced by uh, developing these formulations is a mixed integer linear formulation. Now, the type of solvers that can be used for mixed integer linear optimization include uh, CBC, uh, this is the open source version, uh, Groby, which is proprietary, Express, which is proprietary, Cplex, which is proprietary, and quite a number of others. The non-linear uh, formulations that Omelette has are ReLU complementarity, full space smooth, reduced space smooth, etc., etc. Now, there are quite a number of non-linear optimization solvers. These include IPOPT, uh, which is under an open source uh, license, and quite a number of other solvers. Now, the reason that I'm calling attention to this is that in Omelette, you can very easily combine uh, different activation functions into one neural network, or rather we take from ONNX uh, neural networks that combine uh, both um, ReLU and smooth activation functions. The reason that there's a little bit of a hidden complexity there is that we recommend if you are using a, a full space smooth neural network formulation or a reduced space smooth uh, neural network formulation on any of these non-linear activation functions, including TANH and SOFT+, we recommend to use um, those uh, smooth activation functions together with the ReLU complementarity formulation. And the reason that we recommend to do this is that um, then you end up with a nonlinear optimization problem. Um, I dearly love mixed integer nonlinear optimization problems. I've actually even written a solver for one of them, um, but it they are quite difficult problems to solve. So basically, if you mix mixed integer linear with uh, nonlinear, what you'll end up with is a different class of solver uh, where you do have more difficulty working with the optimization problem. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, so I mentioned all of these different formulations. I was mentioning uh, full space smooth, reduced space smooth, blah, 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 blah. Now there's lots of research papers in this area. Um, but what Omelette is trying to do is trying to show, hey, we can put these optimization formulations in competition, and then the user can get whatever is the best without having to experiment with implementing every single one. Um, so the key idea here is that one optimization formulation may, uh, for one particular application, be more effective than another. Um, and the optimization community already has uh, algebraic modeling languages, uh, such as Pyuma, which make switching optimization solvers easy. Uh, so I gave these optimization solver examples on the previous page. You can just switch between them very easily in, in Pyuma. What Onlet's doing is that we're making switching formulations as easy as changing a couple lines of code. And I want to give an example. Let's say we have um, a neural network that is using uh, ReLU activation functions. And uh, remember that uh, ReLU activation function is a non-smooth activation function, so we either are equal to zero or equal to this line. Um, well, the very uh, well-known uh, Big M formulation is a formulation that is going to use binary variables, and it's effectively going to aggregate all of these inputs x into the node uh, in some way, aggregate these together so that you have uh, sort of one binary variable that you're turning things on and off, and you have an output y. In Omelette, saying that you want to use uh, this ReLU Big M formulation is exactly one line of code. But what if you want to use this partition-based formulation? Now, I am a big fan of this partition-based formulation um, because I am a co-author on this paper, um, but I don't know if for a very particular application if uh, this partition-based formulation is going to be better. What happens in this partition-based formulation is that um, we have this parameter p. In this case, I'm saying that the parameter p is equal to 3. And what that parameter p is equal to 3 means is that I am somehow aggregating the inputs x into the node 
into three parts. Um, I do also have to define um, a function for uh, defining which of the variables go into each of the partitions. Um, but once I have done that, I have uh, only to say, well, I don't want to use this big M formulation again. I just want to use uh, this ReLU partition formulation. Um, so in Omelette, having to switch between uh, ReLU big M and our proposed uh, partition-based formulation is as simple as uh, defining this parameter P um, and then defining this uh, split function. I would have to define this split function elsewhere. Didn't have room for it on the slide, um, but this is actually uh, the most complicated switch in Omelette between two different formulations. It all gets easier from here. Um, so what we showed in uh, this paper about these partition-based formulations is that this uh, parameter P uh, is basically something that really affects the time of solving uh, these particular type of optimization problems. Um, so this is time on a log scale on the uh, on the x-axis, and then on the y-axis we have the number of solved, so over time each of the formulations is solving more and more and more. And what I am showing here is that this p is equal to 1, this is equivalent to the big M formulation, is always solving fewer uh, than the other formulations. And then um, the um, value p is equal to 2 seems to be nice, at least for the easy problems, it does get a bit slower than some of the other formulations for quite difficult problems. And then what you'll notice is that when uh, this parameter P gets quite large, uh, the performance is declining. So for instance, this value of P is equal to 10 is not very good. Neither is the value of P is equal to seven, eight or nine. Um, and so in our paper, what one of the things that we propose doing is that we say that for most problems we may want to sort of choose uh, p is equal to 2 or p is equal to 4 um, because these are values that tend to work for a large number of problems. Uh, but the point of omelette, of course, is that you don't have to take our word for it. Uh, just change the parameter p is equal to 3 to whatever else it is that you want uh, for your own problem. As an example, and this example is a Jupyter notebook that is uh, in our omelet code base, let's take uh, this function that we have sampled quite a number of points from it. So I'm not giving all of the code in the Jupyter notebook. If you want the rest of the code from the Jupyter notebook, please go to our Jupyter notebook. Um, but basically, the only thing we do at the beginning of uh, this Jupyter notebook is to read a CSV file. This CSV file um, has one input, x, it has one output, y, it has 10,000 uh, samples, um, and the uh, function itself is basically a uh, quadratic that is being perturbed by a sign. Um, here is the original training data on the left-hand side, I just plotted out. And then the scaled training data is on the right-hand side. For the scaled training data, uh, we've just made it so that the training data has mean zero and standard deviation equal to one. Okay, so let's say that we wish to build a Keras neural network. Uh, so far, we're not doing anything with Omelet. We're just using Keras. Um, and we're going to first build a Keras neural network with a ReLU activation function. Um, I would define uh, the, the architecture of the uh, neural network itself. I would define what optimizer I want to use uh, to train the neural network. I would define the loss function, um, and I would define basically how I'm happy to fit the neural network, and then we're going to run Keras, right? So there's the original data, and if you can see the orange dots on the left-hand side, uh, basically this is how good this particular uh, ReLU uh, approximation does of approximating the function that we had. Okay, I could build a similar Keras neural network now with a sigmoid activation function. Um, so instead of having a ReLU activation function, I could have a sigmoid activation function, or I could develop um, a neural network that has a mixed activation function, 
where some of the nodes are activated by the sigmoid function and some are activated by a ReLU activation. Okay, so as we mentioned before, this is just Keras. Um, but now we're going to start using Omelette. So what happens is that after we have built uh, the Keras model, we're going to say that we are going to load uh, the Keras model using the Keras reader, and this Keras reader is in Omelette. And we have a uh, neural network formulation now. Um, then what we're going to do, and this is now uh, Pyomo code, we're going to say we have a concrete model and we're going to say that we have these variables x and then we have these variables y. Um, so these are uh, Pyomo variables and they're going to be part of our optimization problem. Then I'm going to say that my objective is in this case to minimize y. So just to look at the function, what I'm hoping is going to be the output is going to be uh, something with x a bit less than zero and y also uh, less than zero but greater than negative one. That's the point that I'm basically hoping to get out if I have uh, formulations that are, per that are behaving in a reasonable sort of way. Okay. So then um, what I'm going to say is that uh, I have a neural network that is an omelet block. So this is where we have this abstraction um, that is basically we only have to hook into the inputs of the omelet block and the outputs of the omelet block. Now I'm going to pick the formulation. So um, if I am using a sigmoid activation function, for instance, um, I have the choice we mentioned b before between a full space smooth neural network formulation or a reduced space smooth neural network formulation. The way to switch between the two of those is odd, honestly just to take full space smooth neural network formulation and replace it with full reduced space smooth neural network formulation. It's not even one line of code. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and build the formulation. Um, this is now an, an omelet command. And now what happens is that we have this omelet block, it has this neural network inside, but we have to hook the inputs and the outputs of the omelet block to our optimization problem so that Pyomo knows what's going on. That's what we're doing in these uh, next two uh, lines or next two sets of lines. Basically what we're saying is that the um, variable X that we had defined as a Pyomo variable is equal to the input of the neural network and the variable y, which again we had defined previously, is equal to the output of the neural network. So these two sets of lines is basically what I meant when I said that we have to hook the inputs and outputs of the omelet block to uh, the Pyomo formulation. Now um, we're going to use ipopt um, to solve the optimization problem and uh, we want to examine the solution. So here is, is what we get. I mentioned that it wasn't even one line of code to switch uh, between this reduced space formulation and the full space formulation. Um, in this particular instance, when we optimized using uh, the reduced space formulation, um, we got an answer to the optimization problem. And remember, the, the optimization problem is just to minimize this function. Our answer was this black dot, uh, which is indeed a local optimum. It's not the global solution. And then the full space formulation um, achieved uh, this uh, blue dot here at the bottom. So in this particular case, um, the full space formulation happened to work a bit better uh, with IPOPT. Um, this is not the fault of the formulation. It is not the formulation that is meaning that we are getting a local solution. This is rather um, that we're solving difficult optimization problems. We're using um, a solver that is not always guaranteed to be able to get out of local minimum. And in this particular case, we were not lucky enough to get out of the local minimum. So um, these are both reasonable solutions. Um, if I was to be consistently getting better solutions with the full space formulation, I would just go ahead and use it. Um, but there is an interesting trade-off here. So you'll notice what the omelet block did. 
when the omelet block created the formulation of the neural network. Um, for the full space smooth neural network formulation, it added 209 variables and 208 constraints, whereas the reduced space smooth neural network formulation only added six variables and five constraints. So what's going on here? Basically, this number of variables and number of constraints um, that is different between these two formulations is exactly why researchers have studied these two formulations. So basically what happens is in these full space uh, formulations, you end up introducing a new variable for every single one of uh, the nodes in the neural network. Whereas in these reduced space formulations, you end up um, introducing only a new expression for each node in the neural network. Now, the trade-off is that the full space formulation is going to end up having quite a lot of variables and quite a lot of constraints. However, the reduced space uh, neural network formulation is going to have very complicated expressions. Um, so it is, of course, a trade-off. Now, uh, in our particular case, uh, we also looked at uh, in addition to a sigmoid activation function, we looked at uh, ReLU activation functions. We found that um, the complementarity, big M, and partition formulations all ended up in this case uh, with, a, uh, with the same output of um, uh, the optimization problem. And then our mixed ReLU slash sigmoid activations also got uh, the, the same answer. Um, however, they all have a different number of variables and constraints and different types of variables and constraints that they are introducing. In addition uh, to this example, which is available in its full glory on our GitHub page, our GitHub page has quite a number of other uh, Jupyter Notebook examples. So for instance, we have this example of an autothermal reformer. Um, there's this really great code called uh, Deus PSE. Um, that uh, was used to build a process model of this autothermal reformer. And then um, what we did is we developed a neural network surrogate uh, with data uh, from a Deus PSE, and uh, one of the notebooks, or actually two of the notebooks, are looking at uh, developing optimization problems on this autothermal reformer. Um, we're looking at uh, activation functions that are both uh, smooth and also the, the ReLU activation function. Um, if you want even more notebook examples, um, we have uh, uh, two notebooks where our point is to sort of show how to use Omelette. Um, then we have an example uh, that works with uh, the MNIST uh, data set for looking for adversarial examples. And we also have a Bayesian optimization example that's looking at uh, optimizing the Rosenbrock function. Um, so remember to check out our GitHub page. Uh, what Omelette is doing is that it's translating a trained neural network or gradient boosted tree model, um, so a machine learning model, into PyOMO constraints. Uh, we are achieving interoperability via the ONNX interface, and we can easily switch and compare optimization formulations. Um, thanks a lot for uh, staying to the end, and uh, if you wish to join us, uh, find us on GitHub. Uh, we'd love to have you on board. <laughs>